Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and I apologize for taking so long to make this video. In fact, mm. Tower sucks. Oh, he sucks. Yeah, so ever since I promised to make that UDL guide, this guy hasn't stopped haunting me. Yeah, why don't you go haunt somebody else? So last week we had a look at the Snake Pit, a dungeon that I said I was fairly pleased with. I think it's still fun to play through, it had a decent difficulty, especially for newer players, although admittedly it became a lot easier with age, I still liked it. So as promised, today I will be looking at the Undead Lair. What similarities do the Snake Pit and the UDL share, and what new things does the UDL bring to the table? Let's find out. Before I get into anything, the Undead Lair, or UDL, drops only from one enemy. The Ghost God, located in the Godlands, which is the center of the map. Now just because only one enemy drops it does not mean that it is less common than the Snake Pit, in fact I think it might be even more common, but I have no real way of proving that, so I'm gonna move on. The overall structure of the UDL is like your run of the mill dungeon. You spawn in a room, you gotta get to the boss room by going through other rooms, but the main difference between this and the Snake Pit is that each and every room is not separated by a destructible path. This means within each and every room that you explore, you leave yourself wide open from the previous enemy that you may have left alive in the previous room. This does give the player a little bit of an incentive to clear every room, and it lets you build up some sort of an uneasiness whenever you walk around the corner since it's no longer blocked off. But since this is how all future dungeons will be structured, there's really no point to analyzing it. Now I can't confidently say that the UDL is any bigger or smaller than the Snake Pit, but I can tell you that I found myself getting lost a lot more here. Now that's more of a personal issue, I don't really have any proof for that that it will happen to you, but that's from my experience. Now putting the size of the dungeon aside, I think it's safe to assume that the UDL will take longer for you to complete. Now this really only applies to new players, since maxed out players can just rush by everything, but for the people that actually have to clear every room, it's gonna take a little while. That's because the UDL steps things up in enemy variety. We got skeletons, mummies, specters, vampires, reapers, bats, constructs, and slimes. I think it's safe to assume that the bats are the weakest enemies. They're not gonna give you too much trouble. I mean, yeah, they're annoying, they come in numbers, they fly around, and they frequently poke you for small damage, but it's just to give you a little taste of what's to come. It's like a fine wine on the tip of your tongue, only instead of wine, it's poison. It's not enough to kill you, but just enough to let you know this ain't good. The next group of enemies I want to talk about are what I like to call almost a threat. They're the enemies that can do a lot of damage, but usually don't. Skeletons and mummies. When you encounter these guys, they're usually in large swarms, all firing their bullets off at the same time, and it looks pretty intimidating at first, but you can just move off to the side and avoid them all. No, seriously though, these guys are not hard to dodge at all. They're slow, they barely chase after you, and they're just all around not that scary. It's like I said, they have the potential to deal a lot of damage, but their means of doing so is very avoidable. So be careful, but don't lose sleep over it. The next group of enemies are the chasers. These are the guys that want your blood, and they want it now. They don't got time to wait. They have an itch to scratch, and they're gonna do it with your corpse. That is really gross. I'm talking about reapers and vampires. So the skeletons could do between 30 and 50 damage, and the mummies could do 40 to 60. It's nothing crazy, but in large numbers it means something. Reapers only do 40 damage, so we're at this comfortable middle ground. The only difference is that reapers can fire every 0.2 seconds. Do you see how fast that is? Last I checked, the reaper used a scythe, not a machine gun. I mean, what warrior is secretly giving him this buff? That would actually be a pretty cool idea. If there were secret rooms within the dungeon that the player could find and it would give you like a temporary buff, like you would find a statue, and if you hit it you would get berserk or healing or something like that. I don't know. Sounds cool to me. Now, despite the Reapers having a startling approach, they're actually pretty easy to fight. If you have enough speed, you can outrun them. But if you don't, just do the circling technique. You keep moving at an angle where you can hurt them and they can't hurt you. This works even if there's more than one of them. Abuse the stupidity of the AI. You have a brain, they don't. Vampires, on the other hand, are a different story. There are two different kinds you'll encounter. Regular old vampires and layer vampire kings. They each have two different shots. The regular vampire has a bullet that does 100 damage and a slowing star that does 80 damage, while the king has a bullet that does 120 damage and a quiet star that also does 80. Now it's kind of ironic because the king is actually the least of your worries. The regular vampire, who does do less damage, has the slow. These guys are fast, while not as fast as the reapers can still hunt you down. Speed is your best friend. By debuffing the player with slow, the one way they can escape death has been removed. If you get blindsided by 
by these guys and become slowed and quiet, it becomes a war of attrition. You have to destroy them before they destroy you. Kill or be killed. If you can't kill them in time, you need to Nexus. Look at how fast they drain my health. No, seriously, did you see how freaking fast my health dropped? They do not mess around. In fact, they might be the most dangerous enemy in the dungeon, except for... Well... I'll get into that in a moment. Approach the corner with caution. In fact, that's a rule of thumb for this entire dungeon. Be aware. With such a wide variety of enemies, you never know what lurks around the corner. And if one of these guys pops out, you just gotta blast them away. Use your abilities while you can before you get quieted. But you wanna know the big question that I have on my mind? What's with that description on Realm Eye? Deluxe hair lotion? New robe every 10 hours? The most fabulous one? You know, suddenly, these guys aren't looking so scary. And finally, the last group of enemies that you should encounter are the heavy hitters. Constructs and Spectres. Constructs have one thing going for them that no other monster in the dungeon has. Size. But despite these guys looking big and strong, they're nothing but pushovers. They each have a narrow triple shot, the Titan dealing 50 damage each, and the Giant doing 80 damage each. But since the shots are so narrow, you can't really maneuver in between them, you just have to avoid them entirely. But the main thing you want to watch out for is the Confusing Star. It can be pretty devastating if you don't know how to properly confuse control. But if you do the Retreat and Lure method that I talked about in the Snake Pit Guide, you can get them into a much wider space to take them out from a distance, or you can move left and right to trick them into shooting in whatever direction you want. Brains over brawn. Brains over brawn. Spectres, on the other hand, are a different ordeal. They have two different means of attacking, a regular bullet and an AoE attack. Their bullets can range from 100 damage to 140, and the AoE shots can range from 50 to 90 damage. Now, the bullets on their own shouldn't be too hard to dodge, I mean, it's kind of what you've been doing this entire game, but AoEs are undoubtedly trickier to deal with. But after no more than maybe one or two glances, you should already be familiar with where they're going to land, and it shouldn't be a problem. What is a problem is walking into a room full of nothing but specters. Because like the skeletons and mummies, once you enter, they all notice you, and they will all start firing. All at the same time. You'd better either keep running forward, or retreat immediately. You can't stand still because you got 15 AoEs landing your way. You have to move and you have to do it quickly. And that's the key to dealing with specters as a whole. You need to keep moving. Take advantage of their shots cooldown to run at them, fire away while slowly turning around them and avoiding their shots and move on to the next ghost. But if that's too tall of an order to ask, you can leave the room, regain some health, and then re-enter the room to fight a ghost one-on-one -on -one, and then retreat back into the room that you were just in to regain some health. Remember, you have vitality they don't. Well, that about does it for enemies. Yeah, I know I'm missing one. <sighs> Alright, let's do this. The final enemy that you will encounter are none other than the slimes. Let me make it very clear. I HATE SLIMES! <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, subject always gets to me. There are two different types of slimes that you will encounter. Brown and black slimes. Which actually look kinda cool. I like the contrast between the bright red eyes and the black tar body. It's cool. Slimes are enemies that, after taking enough damage, will split up into smaller and weaker forms of themselves. So there are more enemies to deal with, but they're weaker, so it's an even trade. Let's start with the black slimes, because they're a little more tolerable. Black slimes have one bullet that does 100 damage, and they fire every second. When you deal enough damage to them, they split up into four medium slimes, who do 80 damage per shot. And once they're taken care of, they split up into four small slimes that do 50 damage each, and after that, they're gone. Now let's think about that for a second. We had one slime that becomes four slimes, and then four slimes that become four slimes each. That's 16 slimes by the end of it that are doing 50 damage per shot. That's 800 damage a second, assuming that they all fired at the same time. Granted, your defense will reduce a good amount of that. It's still pretty appalling that it can even reach that high of a number. But that's just the black slime. You know, taking one of these guys out one-on-one, -on -one, eh, it's not too bad. I mean, you'll leave with some scars, but you'll be healed up in a couple of weeks. Brown slimes, on the other hand, are the pixelated embodiments of Satan himself. Unlike the black slimes who had one shot every second, the brown slimes have three shots every half a second. Second. Three times the shots, twice as fast. A 600 damage output every second. <sighs> wow. Now what's weird is that when you beat the big slime, it doesn't turn into a medium one. It goes straight to small. So you're probably thinking, oh, thank god, less slimes to deal with, right? <laughs> oh no, they somehow made it even worse. Since they skipped the transition from big to medium and go straight to small, they had to compensate for that. After defeating the big slime, it spawns six small slimes. Ah, oh, only six slimes as opposed to the potential 16 from the black, it's a breath of fresh air. Ah, <sighs> no! Small slimes inherit the abilities from the big one, so they also have three shots that fire every half a second. Only it's weaker, 
150 damage. That's 150 damage coming from each slime. Multiply that 150 by 6, that's 900 damage every half a second. 1800 if you wait a full second. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, defense will kick in. But it's not like you can stick around and have a tea party with the freaking thing. No, you gotta get out of there now. Avoid breaking apart the brown slimes at all costs. Ranged characters definitely have the advantage when taking out slimes, but they can't afford to take any damage because of how squishy they are. In fact, there are times where it's near impossible to go through without dying. If you don't have enough death and you don't have enough speed, and you're alone, there's not really much you can do. You'll have to play the trading game, where you run in full speed, deal as much damage as you can, but quickly run out, anticipating the damage that you'll take, then heal up and do it again. One last thing I do have to mention are the traps. Oh yeah, it doesn't end there. There are traps in the UD. Oh my god. God. There are two different kinds of traps. Burst traps and blast traps. Burst has a circle on it and blast has a square. That's how you tell them apart. Although, to be honest, I never knew the difference until I looked it up. Both of them deal 100 damage per shot and they activate whenever you get close enough. But burst traps have 12 shots that shoot in a circle. So if you stand on top of it, you're taking 1200 damage. But if you approach it slowly, it'll blow up before you even get the chance to do so. But if you're rushing, you might accidentally sit on one and you better hope to god that it's the blast trap. Because that one only has half the shots. Six and they shoot in the direction of the player. Much less damage, but it's the bane of rushing. Well, that took a lot longer than expected. I was anticipating this video to be a lot shorter than the Snake Pit Guide, but now it's been like 12 minutes and I haven't even started talking about the boss yet. Let's do that now. Septavius the Ghost God. Or as I like to call it, Ghost God with red eyes. I mean, at least Steno had a different color palette and she had daggers, but here, this is just lazy. Although between you and me, I'm perfectly fine with his design. His first phase is made up of spiraling bullets. Small white bullets will move from him around the room in a clockwise fashion. The thing unique to the bullets is that they pierce for 75 damage, meaning it goes through armor. Doesn't matter how high your defense is, it's always going to do 75. Now, like Steno's boss fight, there are pillars that you can stand behind to prevent yourself from taking damage. The only thing is that you have a bunch of ghost minions coming after you. They don't hurt for that much, but you obviously don't want to stand around and take the damage. Constantly running and firing behind you will let you take out the ghosts themselves, but that still leaves the actual bullets themselves. The closer you are to Septavius, the faster you'll be able to make a full circle around him. Naturally, as you get further away from a circle, it takes longer for you to run around it. If you choose the inner path, there's a chance that you could dodge all of the bullets entirely, but you have to be more precise. If you choose the outer path, you'll have a much safer time, but since you can't keep up with the bullets, you'll have to periodically fit yourself in between the shots and then continue moving. I should also mention that there are larger bullets during this phase too, but if you can avoid the small ones, you should have no problem dodging these as well. His next phase is what I call the Poppy Phase. Periodically, he will release a ring of 12 shots that do 160 damage each. Don't sit on it. It's after this that he goes into the debuff phase. Little brown bullets will fly all over the room. I don't know anyone who's able to fully dodge these shots. Even when I back up all the way to the wall, they still manage to find me. They only do around 40 damage each, but since there's so many of them, if you have low def, they can take a big chunk out of your life in no time. While he's doing this though, he'll be shooting out confusing stars that do 65 damage each. It's a 1.5 second duration of confusion, and since this guy's a pretty heavy hitter to begin with, you don't want any part of that. He shoots in a pattern of three right in front of him and then two off to the side. And then during his final phase, he'll spawn more minions, fire out a triple shot in front of him, which can easily be avoided if you just circle around him like I'm doing, but it can be a little hard to actually hit him because all of the minions are blocking your shots, so if you're a bow class or a ninja, you can pierce right through them. But for other classes, you're gonna have a little harder time killing him fast. But after that, it's all over. Fools! This isn't even my final form. Wait. Yes it is. Oh no! If you got enough soulbound damage on Septavius, you're guaranteed a wisdom potion, and if you guys got the joke from the Snake Pit Guide, I really don't think that that's that great of a reward. You can actually get some pretty good mid-tier items from the enemies, so if you're a much newer player and just want to get your hands on any items, farm up some enemies. But bring friends, you don't want to have to solo this thing. Not with those slimes lurking in the shadows. But the drop of interest that everyone does a UDL for is the white bag. The Doombo. Need I say anything more? It's one of the best items in the entire game, that's for sure. While I may not think that Wisdom is a good drop, if there's ever a chance that I'll get a Doombo from a UDL, I'll keep doing them. So, that was the UDL. While I don't think it's as good a dungeon as, say, the Snake Pit, I think it's definitely worth your time if you're Wisdom hunting, although I do think that there are some better options, but uh, I'll touch upon that in other videos. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. The next video that I wanted to do was going to be the Abyss of Demons guide. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have enough time for that, so I'm going to have to put that on hold for another project that I've been working on. 
So the next time we meet, we're going to be looking at a video you guys have been requesting for a while. Alright? See ya.